Let me ask you about some competitors. Sure. You've been uh, complimentary of Elon and Tesla's work on Optimus Robot uh, with this, uh, their humanoid robot. What do you think of uh, their efforts there with the humanoid robot? You know, I really admire uh, Elon uh, as a technologist. I think that uh, what he did with Tesla is just totally mind-boggling that he could go from this totally niche area that, you know, less than 1% of anybody seemed to be interested to making it so that essentially every car company in the world is uh, trying to do what uh, what he's done. So you got to give it to him. And then look at SpaceX. You know, he's basically replaced NASA, if you could. That might be a little exaggeration, but not by much. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you got to admire the guy. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't count him out for, for anything. You know, I don't think uh, Optimus today is uh is where atlas is for instance i don't know it's a little hard to compare them to the other uh companies uh you know i i i visited figure i think they're doing well and they have a good team uh i've uh, visited eptronic and i think they're they have a good team and they're doing well uh but elon has a lot of resources he has a lot of ambition I like to take some credit for his ambition. I think, uh, I think, if I read between the lines, it's hard not to think that uh, him seeing what Atlas is doing is a little bit of an inspiration. I, I hope so. Mm-hmm. Do you think Atlas and Optimus will will hang out at some point? I would love to host that. You know, yeah. now that I'm not at Boston Dynamics, you know, I'm not officially connected. I am on the board, but I'm not officially connected. I would love to host a uh, robot meetups. A robot meetup, yeah. <laughs> Uh, does the AI Institute uh, work with spots and atlases? Is it focused on spots mostly right now uh, as we a have, platform? We have a bunch of different robots. We bought everything we could buy. So we have uh, uh, spots. Uh, I think we have a good size fleet of them. I don't know how many it is, but a good size fleet. We have a couple of Animal robots. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Animal is a company founded by Marco Hutter, even though he's not that involved anymore, but we have a couple of those. We have a bunch of arms like, uh, you know, Franca's and. Uh, U.S. Uh, robotics, because uh, you know, even though we have ambitions to build stuff, and we are build, starting to build stuff, uh, you know, day one getting off the ground, we just, you know, just bought stuff. And, uh, <laughs> I love this like robot playground you've built. Yeah. You can <laughs> come over and take a look if you want. <laughs> That's great. So it's like all these kinds of robots, legged arms. It doesn't feel that much like. Well, there's some areas that feel like a playground, but it's not like they're all frolic. <laughs> together (laughs) hey again maybe you'll arrange it uh a robot meetup um but in general what's your view on competition in this space for especially like humanoid and legged robots are you are you excited by the competition or the the friendly competition i think that um it it doesn't you know i don't think uh, i don't think about competition that much uh you know i'm not a commercial guy uh, I think for many years at Boston, you know, the many years I was at Boston Dynamics, we di- we didn't think about competition. We were just kind of doing our thing. There wasn't it wasn't like there were products out there that we were competing with. No, you know, maybe there was some competition for DARPA mm-hmm. funding, which we got, you know, got a lot of, got very good at at getting. But even there, uh, in in a couple of cases where we might have competed, we ended up just being the robot provider. That is for the little dog program. You know, we we just made the robots. We didn't participate as developers except for developing the robot. And in the DARPA Robotics Challenge, we didn't compete. We uh, provided the robots. So, uh, uh, you know, in the AI world now, now that we're working on cognitive stuff, it feels much more like a, a competition. You know, the, the entry uh, requirements in terms of computing hardware and uh, – and the skills of the team are, uh, and, and and hiring talent, it's it's a much tougher place. So I think much more about competition now on the cognitive side. On the physical side, it doesn't feel like it's that much about competition yet. Uh-huh. Obviously, with 10 humanoid companies out there, 10 or 12, I mean, there's probably others that I don't know about. Um, they're definitely in competition, will be in competition. How much room is there for... A uh, quadruped and especially a humanoid robot to become cheaper, so like cutting cost. 
and like how low can you go <laughs> and how much of it is just mass production so questions of you know Hyundai like how to produce versus like engineering innovation how to simplify um i think there's a huge way to go i don't think we've seen the bottom of it or the bottom in terms of lower prices uh you know i think you should be totally optimistic that at asymptote things don't have to be anything like as expensive as they are now back to competition i wanted to say one thing i think in the quadruped space having other people selling quadrupeds is a great thing for boston dynamics because the question i believe the question in the users minds is which quadruped do i want it's not oh can a quadru do i want a quadruped can a quadruped do my job uh it's much more like that which is a, a great place for it to be yeah then then you're just you know doing doing the things you normally do to make your product better and compete and sell, selling and all that stuff. And that'll be the way it is with humanoids at some point. Well, there's a lot of humanoids and you're just not even, it's like uh, it's, iPhone versus Android and people are just buying both and it's kind of just, yeah. Uh, you, you're not really- You're creating the category yeah, you know, or the category, category is happening. I mean, right now the use cases, you know, that that's the, the key thing, having realistic, use cases that are money making uh in robotics is is a big challenge you know there's the warehouse use case that's probably the only thing that makes anybody any money in robotics at this point there's got to be a moment there's old fashioned robot i mean there's aren't fixed arms doing manufacturing i don't want to yes. say that they're not making money it's industrial robotics yes but i, I there's got to be a moment when social robotics starts making real money meaning like a spot type robot in the home and there's tens of millions of them in the home and they're like, you know, I don't know how many dogs there are in the United States as pets, but this many. feels, <laughs> many. <laughs> it feels like there's something we love about having a intelligent companion with us that remembers us, that's excited to see us, all that kind of stuff. But it's also true that the companies making those things, there've been a lot of failures in recent times, right? There's that one year when I think three of them went under. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's easy. not that easy to do that, right? Getting you know, getting uh, performance, safety, and cost all to be where they need to be at the same time is, uh, that's, that's hard. But also some of it is, like you said, you can have a product, but uh, people might not be aware of it. So like also part of it is the videos or however you connect with the public, uh, the the culture and like create the category. They make, make people realize this is the thing you want. Because from a, you know, there's a lot of negative perceptions you can have. Do you really want a system with a camera in your home walking around, right? Uh, if if it's presented correctly and if there's like the right kind of boundaries around it that you understand how it works and so on, that uh, a lot of people would want to. And if they don't, they might be suspicious of it. So that that's an important one. Like we, we all use smartphones and it has a camera that's looking at us. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it has two or three or four. <laughs> and it's listening. Isn't it? Very few people are, are uh, you know, suspicious about it. They kind of take it for granted and so on. And I think robots would be the same kind of way. I, I agree.